What's up guys, this is uh, Ty Zen, and in this video guys, I wanna share with you a project I've been working on for the last like 10 to 12 months, and I think it's time to go ahead and put it into application. So I've been doing some research because I travel a lot, my wife and I, we both travel all over to all the major cities in America, and we stay there for weeks and sometimes a few months at a time. And one of the things that we really enjoy about traveling throughout America is that it, America has so many beautiful and magnificent uh, landscapes and cities that although we live, we currently live in Dallas, Texas right now, and that's our home base, it's, we really don't feel like Dallas is actually our home because we spend a lot of time away from it in other cities, okay? So um, I feel like America is my home. And if you ask me where I park my car and you know, where my kids go to school and things like that. I can say Dallas, Texas, but uh, the reality is I spent a lot of time in, in a lot of major cities in America. So one of the things that has kept us from being able to travel even more is that we have two kids, a two-year-old, uh, uh, my daughter is uh, Athena is two years old and my son Maximus is three years old. And one of the things that we like to do is uh, that when we go to the beach or go to any places like that that's far away from the house, um, I always have to bring the kids back to the hotel um, so that they can take their naps because I don't want to interfere with their nap times and their, their sleep times and their eating times. I like to keep it consistent for my kids, right? So that has always prevented us from being able to extend far from our home base, okay? So um, one of the things that my wife and I decided is that since we currently own a Toyota Sienna minivan, why don't we get rid of that van and then we buy a European style van and, and that's an RV and then we can that way when we, we, we leave the house, we can stay a little bit farther. We can stay away for like two, three days at a time without having to spend a lot of excess money at the hotels and stuff and motels. And it's not like it's a lot of money to, to, to stay at the hotels. The biggest thing is that when we're at the beach, I like to stay at the beach. I don't have, like to have to run back and forth to the beach just so that my kids can take a nap and stuff and eat and stuff. And I like to have it so that if we can have like a temporary residence on uh, in our van or, or in our vehicle, then we can stay there a lot longer. I, sometimes I like to just go to the beach or to the mountains or anything, something like that and just open the doors and be able to absorb in the beautiful view of nature there. But with the Toyota minivan that we currently have, that is not really a big option because there's no place to lay down and things like that. And the second thing is that um, I cannot drive for very long without falling asleep. Now, my wife can drive all day without falling asleep, but you know I don't want to put the burden on her only. So because of that, we both came to the conclusion that if we can get us an RV camper van, we can travel longer distances. And then while she's driving, I can lay down in the back and sleep or do work on my computer and stuff. And then we can switch off, okay? So um, I have a hard time sleeping in a vehicle uh, in an upright position. I prefer to lay in an incline uh, position or lay flat altogether, okay? So we started going around shopping for a RV camper van. One of the biggest problems we run into is one is the cost, okay? Um, most of the RV vans that we wanted, and we chose an RV van for several reasons. One was because... Uh, my wife can drive it, I can drive it. It's not that much bigger than a Toyota minivan that we currently have right now. And so my wife did not, she got into like a, uh, like those bus type RVs and then those class C RVs and they were just way too big. She was, she did not very feel comfortable um, uh, where she couldn't see around her and things like that. The blind spots and the vehicle was just too big and she couldn't gauge the parking and the parallel parking and all that stuff correctly. So we decided to go with a Class B RV van or an RV camper van. And we did not want the ones that are just built on the van. We want the ones that look just like a van on the outside. Um, in addition to it being easy to operate, navigate, and handle while we are driving it and parking it, we also wanted the RV van size, uh, uh, our, the van size RVs, because we wanted to be able to go and park anywhere we wanted to without having to pay for parking fees and crazy stuff like that. And some of the national parks in America, they don't allow you to bring a like a bus up in there and park in there, but you can get away with an RV. And then we have lots of friends around the country that if we go to their house, a lot of time um, in America, uh, especially in the nice neighborhoods, 
the homeowners associations. Um, they're the ones that govern how you plant your landscapes, you know, what color roofs you have, what color fences you have, if you can put solar panels on your roof, things like that, and how you need to landscape your yard and everything. Um, usually when you are in a nice neighborhood, um, they have an HOA and they require certain restrictions and almost all of them do not allow a bus size RV to be parked in front of your house because they consider it lowering the value of property. And so I currently live in North Dallas and the homeowners associations here, they do not allow you to park a, a, like a big truck or a big van or any kind of big vehicles in front of your property uh, because they feel like it makes it look ugly, okay? Like I want solar panels on the roof of my house and there's not enough roof space on the back side uh, so I have to put solar panels on the front and they don't allow that. So I can't put no solar panels on my house because I can't use the back side and the front side. So the homeowners associations are sometimes a pain in the butt. So something that you guys got to consider if you ever decide to buy a house, okay? Anyway, so um, the cost of the vans, the RV vans that we wanted over $100,000 and the, uh, the size of the van needs to be small enough to where my wife can drive it and we can park it anywhere including on our own property here in North Dallas. So for some of those reasons, right, and the maintenance costs and the operations costs on the RV size vans are a lot more cost efficient versus driving a bus around, okay? Um, and besides, we don't need all that space. We just needed something that we can stay away from our house and our home base temporarily for two to three days, and that's all we needed. So we settled on an RV van, um, and I'll go into, in a subsequent video, I'll explain more of why I chose the uh, Dodge Ram ProMaster versus the, uh, the Mercedes Sprinter or versus the Ford Transit, because those are like the main three vans that are competing against each other as far as cargo van goes. Well, I did all that research, and I think that in 2016 coming up here, I'm ready to move forward with the actual uh, purchasing the van and constructing it, right? Uh, because... One of the things I noticed that when my friends and my uh, and I and my wife and I we went shopping for an RV is that the not only was the cost of the van uh, very high it was like over a hundred thousand uh, dollars U.S. dollars for the type of RV van that we wanted that had all the amenities and features that we wanted but the other problem uh, that I had was that the construction quality was extremely piss poor okay um, some of these high end RV vans you would think that if you pay $100,000 for it, it would have a good quality build. And in my opinion, I have a background in, uh, uh, my older brother and I used to own a machine shop and a welding shop when we were young. We worked at the shipyards building commercial fishing boats uh, near Houston. So because of that, we have a background in manufacturing and I have extensive background in doing that uh, with machining and welding and working with metal, wood, fiberglass. And I was, extremely shocked when I went to go shop for these RVs because I've never seen uh, uh, first of all I don't have any RV experience so when I went and looked at it for the first time at the dealerships I could not believe the poor craftsmanship and the core the poor manufacturing quality uh, uh, there was no quality uh, in these RVs okay compared to like how cars are manufactured how cameras are manufactured how computers are manufactured um, how boats uh, and just different things are manufactured. The quality of an RV uh, is manufacturing in most of the ones that I saw, including the Road Trex, the uh, Winnebago's, you know, all the popular name brand RVs. I don't remember them all, but I know that I went and looked at probably over uh, 100 different RVs at um, dealerships in South Carolina, in uh, Florida, in Texas, in Southern California. And I was just extremely shocked at how poorly built these RVs are. Now, the chassis the, from the factory, whether it's a Sprinter chassis or whether it's a Ford Transit chassis or a, a Dodge ProMaster uh, chassis, the chassis and the engine and the drivetrain, the wheels, the transmissions and all that were very high quality as what you would expect from those manufacturers. However, when the RV company comes in and they start to customize it and, and upfit it or and build it into an RV, that's where the poor craftsmanship comes in. Um, and and it's there's like the high end, um, which is very luxurious and they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars 
for all the leather and, and the plush leather and glass and chrome and things like that and stainless steel. Uh, when I look at those, um, they're way too high and the, they do not have the amenities and the features that will allow me to uh, bring along my two-year-old and my three-year-old. So, uh, the, and then the price range is way out of what I want to spend on an RV. And at the other end of the spectrum, on the, on the towards the low end, the RV quality build, the build quality is just so low that with my background in the manufacturing and machining and stuff, I just, mentally, I just, it's just, I find it very hard to, to pay for something that is that low of a quality build, okay? So what I did was I did some research to find out, uh, and I discovered that one third of the, these $100,000 RVs, one third of it would go into the cost of the vehicle itself. So whether you get the, the Ford Transit or the Dodge Promaster or the Mercedes uh, Sprinter, all these high European style vans, um, a third of the cost of the RV would normally go towards the vehicle chassis itself. And when I say chassis, I mean the engine and the body and the, and the guts would be empty. The, the interior would be empty and you had the, 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 man, the, the RV manufacturer would have to customize it into an RV. And so I decided, hey, you know what? If I spend that 30, 35,000 on the, the chassis, uh, the vehicle itself, I can, I'm confident that the other two thirds of the cost, the other like 66,000, $67,000, I can use that. Uh, I, I don't need all that. I can use way less than that to put several features inside my RV that my wife and I and the kids can use, okay? So, um, hopefully that will work out. I'm going to start this project and throughout these video series guys I will share with you how I shop for the RV, how I shop for the components and I'm going to invite the collective wisdom. I'm going to borrow the collective wisdom of everyone online on YouTube, on the internet and on the, uh, the Dodge ProMaster forums to help me figure out some of the components and some of the parts. Um, I used to build commercial fishing boats um, so I am handy with my hands and with my tools and things like that. I have all the tools that I need. I don't have to run out and buy it or anything uh, unless there's some special specific tools that I need. Uh, and I have several friends in, in you know air conditioning, electrical, plumbing and everything. So and if I don't I can just reach out and hopefully you guys can help me. So this will be just my first intro video guys and in subsequent videos I will update you guys more on how I'm going throughout the process and through this journey. Um, in the past, when I was young, I used to do a lot of art projects that consisted of painting lots of beautiful women, and just for myself personally. And then there was a time in my life, um, in my early 20s, where mid 20s or so, where I was uh, asked, I was commissioned to paint for a church, and I did some religious murals, and it really changed my mind. Uh, because when I finished that religious mural for the church, I, I realized how, how I had wasted so much time in my life painting stuff for myself personally or just one or two, a few customers. Uh, and I decided, you know what, if I'm going to do some art uh, in the future, I want to do something that can benefit a lot of people at one time. Because why spend three or four or five or six months on one art project? It only benefits myself or another or one customer where I can do that same amount of time, spend that six months or a year and do an art project that can benefit hundreds and thousands of people around the world with the creativity and the skills that was given to me on the, uh, when I came into this world. Okay, So um, I know that's a lot philosophical and, and stuff like that, but I just want to throw that out there, guys, that uh, I'm, I'm doing this because I really, not just for me and my family to travel in and have fun in, but I really, I, when I look online and on YouTube and on the internet, guys, I see a lot of people building uh, their own camper vans and it has given me a lot of value, a lot of ideas to do mine. So I want to give back to. And also, I've uh, seen a lot of people on YouTube where they are living the van life and they are using materials or construction methods that I feel that are very unsafe. Um, you know, there could be fire hazards, there can be lots of safety hazards. And based on the background that I had working at the shipyards and stuff, I want to share with everybody some of the things that you can do to build your, your uh, van 
that is safe and it's well built and it doesn't, you know, hopefully it's a low uh, budget and a low cost too and it serves what it's supposed to. Uh, we have a lot of people in America that lost their homes during the 2008 financial crisis and I really hope that my uh, open source uh, RV van, my open source camper van, my open source bug out vehicle will help those out there that desperately need a place to live or just want to have a recreational vehicle like myself and my family. Well, thanks for watching this video, guys. And if you guys like this video and want to see more of it, give me a thumbs up so that I will know to continue making them. If you don't like this, give me a thumbs down so I know not to waste time making it. And if you guys have friends or family or, or if you're a YouTuber and you have an audience that you know likes this kind of stuff, please share this with them. And I invite you guys to send me any ideas or thoughts that you have to incorporate into this open source uh, van. And hopefully the one that I build will be like the beta version. And then the rest of the community out there, the RV community and the van community, can jump on it and then take it and expand it further and make it even better. But hopefully this will be the, 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 uh, the stimulus that gets things going, guys. Um, like again, thanks for watching this video. And I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video.